Ashley Norton, Education Developer at BlickArt Materials. I'm really excited to demonstrate this part two lesson of our Alcohol Inks Endeavor. We're going to be using a combination of colors uh, from the uh, Ranger Ink color range, pardon my pun, and we're going to paint a cactus because it has lots of neat colors uh, that we can use that will work nicely together. Uh, we're going to use these alcohol inks today on Yupo paper, which is an innovative, uh, still newish, uh, tree-free paper that is ultra smooth. And uh, we know from our last session that ultra smooth surfaces are perfect for using alcohol inks. The inks are gonna sit on top and they're not really gonna soak in. So they're gonna stay nice and bright as we work. Alcohol inks are fast drying, which is perfect for this process. Once everything's dry, we're gonna add in a new material to this process, uh, which are the glaze pens. So these feel and look a lot like the alcohol inks when they go down. It lets out a little bit of glaze and uh, it's the perfect mix in for this process so that we can hit those details that we want without the alcohol inks spilling all over our paper. Cause as you know, they do like to flow. Then we're going to do a last quick technique with a micron pen to get those crispy edges that we like. But we're not going to stop there. We're actually going to mount this Yupo paper painting onto a hardboard. This is all wood and we're going to, um, these are the same size, so 9 by 12 and 9 by 12. We're going to mount that on there and we're even going to top it off with a coat of resin. So we have a lot of ground to cover. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that I did here, uh, which is extremely helpful for this process, is I made a drawing on this Yupo paper. We're providing this drawing that you can work from to help you get started with your alcohol ink painting. And of course, we would love to see what you guys create. So uh, check out this drawing. It's totally free and it's on the bundle page where you can find all of these supplies. I did a quick transfer. So a tip for you out there, if you're wanting some uh, techniques and tips to help get started with drawing, this is just a piece of tracing paper. Um, you go over that drawing with a pencil and then graphite side down, press that pencil into your paper and boom, you have a drawing transfer. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside because I went ahead and uh, did my transfer ahead of time so that we could dive right in. So I'm using a combination of colors, like I said, um, from the Ranger ink line. And I wanna select some colors that are going to be perfect for painting a cactus. So lots of greens, blues, and yellows. But I'm even gonna add in a little bit of this flamingo color because it helps to uh, break up that green landscape that we're gonna be working with. I can add in pearlescent colors. So I'm gonna add in this pearl green and pearl white. Make sure you give those a shake with the lid on nice and tight and make sure that that um, pigment at the bottom gets mixed in. So I'm gonna get these started by giving them a shake until I hear the rattle and I see that the paint is all mixed on the bottom. And this one too. And then the other thing that I want is an alcohol blending solution. This isn't rubbing alcohol. This is your next level uh, alcohol ink uh, painting medium. So it's your painting buddy. And uh, it's gonna help to um, give you a little more working time with the alcohol inks, make them a little more forgiving as we go. I'm even going to use this to thin out our paint to make them just a little bit more transparent because they are so bright uh, as they go on the paper and that can lead to darkness as you layer colors. So we wanna keep them nice and light and we're gonna use that solution to do that. The other thing I have here is a round well palette. I'm gonna go ahead and just like I'm painting with watercolors or a wash, I'm going to unload some of these colors into my palette. And just to make sure I get some variation and some mixing colors, I'm going to start building my palette with blues, greens, yellows, like we just discussed. And you can situate them right next to each other. You can mix your alcohol ink colors together to make new colors. It's always fun when that happens on the surface as well. Sometimes those colors might not be typical, um, like how you get with your watercolors or your acrylic paints, because they are um, 
uh, a lot of premixed colors and so you might get something different that you didn't quite expect but for the most part they're going to be pretty intermixable color wise let's see let's get this pearl on there now remember with the pearl there's a little bit of that pigment that settles so as you work you might want to keep that in mind uh, that you might need some new color after a while to help keep that to the left everything yep. is that better more okay we want to make sure you guys can see out there thank you all right i'm even going to add this flamingo color and i'm just going to offset it so that it doesn't get too mixed in with the other colors on my palette i've got this pearl white of course we could go out there and try and find a regular white but why not add a little bit of that metallic element to differentiate from some of the other colors that we're going to work with you can use a white to help indicate a highlight i bet you haven't thought about that when it comes to alcohol inks thinking about a light source but we've had alcohol inks on the market for a while now so why not test out a different technique now one of the things that you're going to notice about alcohol inks is that they really like to run around on your paper and sometimes that can be fun if you're experimenting but if you want a lot of control that can be difficult to work with so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you for the sake of demonstrating a little tip that I like to do when I'm getting started with alcohol inks and that's just to oops we forgot our alcohol blending solution dump that right into the middle and put some in all of your colors whoop don't get too crazy I'm just adding it right in and it's going to make these colors a little more transparent and I've got some in the middle use as much or as little of this medium as you like now I'm just going to show you maybe with some of this extra here sop that up and some of this green when I drop this down on my paper it's going to flow outward so you want to get some control with where that paint's going to go and as we work we're not going to get super close to the edge so it's going to want to flow um, similarly to a watercolor but uh, it might run a little bit faster than that so always have a test sheet next to you you can test your colors and you can test uh, how the inks are flowing now i'm going to go ahead and start mopping in some color I'm going to alternate between these greens so that I get a little bit of a different effect uh, as I work my way through. And I'm not going to put too much color on at once. So let's start at the top. And we're just going to dab it in right from the center. And I am using, um, this is a number 12 faux squirrel brush. So it imitates squirrel hair, but is totally synthetic and safe. But it's really soft and it gives me a chance to um, really load up the brush with color now i just grabbed up a little bit of the honeycomb yellow color and i'm just dotting it in and i'm not swiping um, like you would with a typical brush painting technique i'm giving the colors enough space from the edge to make sure that i don't get too much bleeding a little bit of bleeding on the outside edges is perfectly good and can be a lot of fun um, but if it bleeds too much and our inks go out of control then we might be unhappy so if I want to wipe off my brush I can just dab it on some paper towels that I have over here so some handy paper towels um, are going to be super useful so before this gets too pooled I'm going to let that spread out and do its thing and before I add more colors I'm going to keep working on my other cactus petals we have this pearl green that we can work with give it a swirl give the pearl a swirl and drop it into your next cactus plate they are more like plates they're really super flat um, so they're kind of ideal for this um, 2d painting process and not too much I'm even gonna take a little bit of blue I'm just gonna drop it in so this is a wet and wet technique so when your ink is still wet you take another color 
and you work it in and it gives you just enough um, color variation to where things aren't all looking the same all the time. So there you go. Now it's a little more visible with that blue and you can mop it around very gently. See how we're getting some of this bleeding, which is totally fine because it's right next to another cactus plate. But we just wanna be careful not to add too much ink too close to the edges. Let's keep working. We're working quickly because the alcohol ink does like to dry really fast. This is kind of a big one, so I'm gonna go ahead and mop that ink in. And let it move around. I'm really wanting some variation, so I'm gonna grab some yellow. And this is where um, we can start to indicate a light source. So that just means that um, you are imagining at some point in your artwork that there's a light hitting it. Maybe it's hitting it from the right, maybe it's hitting it from the left, or maybe it's hitting it from the top down. That's up to you as you work, but we're gonna use this wet into wet technique to bring in that color variation that can also help to indicate a light source. So as you can see, the colors are flowing. They're nice and transparent because we mix them down. And um, let's see, before we get to those detail areas, I am gonna pick up some of this pearl white and I'm gonna mop it into the bottom because that helps to indicate a light source that might be coming up from this way. Mop it in, and it's got a little bit of the green, which is good because we don't want it to be pure white necessarily, or maybe you do. Totally up to you. Wet and wet technique, drop in another color. And it's okay if they bleed from one cactus plate to another. We might even want to play with that and drop in some of that pearl. Now let's make it a little more fun. We're going to take a smaller brush, so whatever you have on hand, I could keep using our faux squirrel brushes and I'm gonna use a round size four. So I'm gonna go way down because I wanna get a little bit more control. Now let's take this red and because some of this is dry, I can go in and I can carefully drop in this little bit of color variation just a little bit. It's a little bit muddy, which is okay because cacti are earthy, green, brown, yellow, and a little bit of red. And we have a little bit of bleeding, but that's okay. That adds a little bit of character, right? That's what the alcohol inks are gonna do. A little bit of bleeding is fine, but too much, it might get out of control. So just inching around the edges. I have a variety of brushes over here that I'm going to keep working in my color with. And now if I want to lift, if I get scared, I can go in with a dry brush. Any dry brush will do. And I can lift some of that color out. So if I'm getting too inky, then I can just go in and soak up some of this color. We're probably gonna do two layers with this painting, so it's okay to do a little bit of lifting. So let's keep going with that same technique all through the cactus. I'm gonna take my six, this is a pretty comfortable brush, and I'm going to drop in some ink just to cover in these spaces that I might have missed. The blending solution here is doing a lot of work to um, go back in and break away some of the hard edges that we made. I 
And so we can push that color around. And we're getting these really nice color variations because we're not just sticking with one color all the time. We're going in with different colors and letting them interact like we would with a watercolor. But as you can see, this is a totally different um, medium than watercolor. So let's keep it going. Uh, I want to make sure that I cover these areas um, so that they stay in the same drying time as the other cactus plates. I'm even going to make a new color over here. This is a little bit of a blue-green. So pretty. See how these colors can mix together and make new ones. And I'm going to be careful. I don't want too much ink on my brush. Dab it off instead of um, on your paper towel. If you want to save color, dab it off in your well palette. And just carefully bring it in with lots of control. So you can see that this is a really nice transparent color, but let's take it and bring it in here. We like it so much. We want more of it. Careful and with lots of control. I like to hold my brush upright because it gives me a little extra control on the brush stroke. And you don't get a lot of that brush strokiness. You know, very rarely will an alcohol ink hold its uh, brush stroke. It really wants to blend and move around. I really enjoyed this red color. I just want a little bit of it. Really just a little bit. And I'm um, even going to just take it down just a little bit. And I'm going to go even smaller. Look at how teeny tiny. I've got a little number two round. Any brushes will work fine. Watercolor, uh, acrylic brushes, any soft brush, not necessarily your bristle brush because you're going to get a lot of um, harsh texture with that. Uh, but just this little tiny brush will do. Nice and light. And we're just going to bring in some color variation because it looks, it looks nice. Um, Let's do a little bit over here. I like this uh, variation on the edges because it looks like, um, you know, where that cactus has just kept growing and growing and growing and it ripens and matures, it turns color just a little bit. And we're gonna just dot this in like we did on the other plate just a little bit. Let it do its thing. And it adds a little bit of highlight. I'm going to go over here as well, nice and pink, where we have some empty space. So that's why it helps to have that drawing. You probably want that drawing to be nice and light because um, you don't want the graphite to show up. But I haven't had too much issue with my pencil marks, so don't worry too much. Um, so here's a really nice just little detail where the ink is flowing into the other color, but it's not disturbing. We can bring these together just a little bit. Just a little bit of that red because it's not typical. It's still a desert color like your yellow and your green, a little bit of browns. And you'll see with these kind of live edges that we're going to clear them up with a micron pen so you don't have to worry too much. Let's keep with this detail brush because it's just giving us a really um, nice ability to control how much ink is going on our paper. And there is a little bit of an odor to the alcohol ink. So just um, word to the wise that if you're sensitive to noxious fumes, there's a little bit of an odor, but um, it's, it's really not bad. Work with a window open and you should be good to go. 
Um, if you're curious about the products that I'm using uh, right now, go and check out the bundle page. You're going to see a link in the chat and it's really going to help you get lift off with a process like this where maybe you've never tried it before and um, you're looking for something new or you're looking for some new colors to bring into your um, already existing alcohol inks palette. Uh, this is going to be uh, a great way to explore and discover new techniques, which I think um, is always helpful when you are someone who practices art in any manner. So <clears throat> we're getting close. I want to do one more layer and then we're going to add some details and we're going to pour resin because don't forget um, this Yupo, we work on it when it's uh, nice and flat, tear it out. It's ready to use right out of the pad of paper and it's generous. You get at least 10 sheets in a pad, maybe more. Um, so always good to have on hand, whether you're testing or uh, what have you. So we want this to get dry just a little bit because we don't want our colors to pool up too much. I'm going to take a medium sized round um, like this number eight. So um, just to catch us up, we're using a 12, eight, six, four, and two round. So the round brush, you get a ton of control. We could use a flat brush if that's what you have, but honestly, the round brush is probably going to get you where you need to go. I really like this pearl. I'm just going to mix it in with whatever I'm using and I'm going to mop some of this color on. I just want to make sure I get some nice variety uh, with my work here, with my paints. I'm going to get some green, wipe that brush off, get some green, and these colors are just going to layer and resettle. and they're going to blend and give you a nice effect. So I'm gonna take a different green that I haven't used much of and I'm gonna bring it in here. Brush it right in over top. It'll disturb that layer underneath just a little bit but then it will resettle like you can see with this plate on top. It just resettles and you get kind of a new combo Every painting is going to be different. So I made this before knowing that when I make it again, it's going to look totally different and I have to be okay with that. And I am because that's the nature of the alcohol inks. So don't go in expecting that every painting that you make is going to be the same just because you have the same drawing. It's not like watercolor where you have a ton of control or even acrylics where you have even more control or oils where you have a lot of working time. You don't have a lot of working time you're letting the colors go, you're letting them flow freely. Bring in some of that pearl. It's just fun, maybe a little bit of blue. Let's get that blue. Bring it in. And just like we did before, we're even gonna add back in some of that magenta or flamingo if you're going by the Ranger color palette, it's Flamingo, which is a fun, fun, cute name for fun, cute alcohol inks. And get some of that green up here. It's okay to overlap, let it blend, let that green take over. A cactus is mostly green. We still have some finishing touches. We've talked a lot about getting through the awkward phase of a painting. We're still a little awkward. We're going to bring it together uh, because don't forget, we're going to use those glaze pens. With this, I want to make sure I get that pearl color. There's a little bit of a light source, just a little bit. How cute is that? Okay, now take more of our green. Let's start to wrap up this large plate down here below. Bring in some blue because it's nice to have variation. I like to kind of blend the edges so that I don't have just cells. If you want cells, that's, you know, that's a great way to approach it. Um, we like cells, they're interesting, but you don't have to have them. You can go in and break that color up and blend. 
you'll still get them, but they won't have to look, you know, stale in your composition, um, like something that maybe doesn't belong. So you can just go in and break them up. Last few steps before we move on to the grand finale. Make sure I get this green. You'll never get an effect like alcohol inks without alcohol inks. So it's definitely something to experiment with. Last thing, we're gonna bring that magenta back in and then we're gonna do a little bit of outlining to try and clear up this imagery. Once it dries, we're even gonna draw right on the alcohol inks with the glaze pen. So if you're looking for something that can um, safely uh, interact with alcohol inks and even add to its um, aesthetic, then uh, stay tuned as we use these glaze pens. It's definitely gonna be something that you wanna try out. This little bit of magenta kind of um, helps to unify the artwork in a way so that it's not just a greenscape. You can use it to kind of um, retouch the edges, get a little bit of purple even as it blends with the blue and green. So let's just take this in as a last step before we go to our glaze pen. Just a little bit down here at the bottom. There's a little bit of bleeding, just a little bit, not too much, but I can put that on pause with my brush here. Last few steps of ink painting, and I know you're gonna miss it as soon as we pull away, you're gonna think, oh wow, that felt really good um, because I didn't have to use a lot of control. I didn't have to think too much about drawing and redrawing. Um, this wet and wet technique just gives you a lot of flexibility to let the colors do their own thing and interact with each other. So just one color that breaks it all up can really help to let that design come forward. Okay. I think we're pretty much done with that color. Okay, so let's take a pause right here and we're going to let these colors dry. So I would just air dry. Um, when I was experimenting with alcohol inks, I noticed that when I used a heat gun to try to dry my inks on Yupo paper, the paper started to bend and move and I got really scared. That's because the paper it's not actually a paper, it's more like a plastic. So if you heat it up, you're actually heating a plastic and that makes it want to bend and warp, which we don't want. We wanna keep this nice and flat. Make sure that these colors get nice and dry. Now, without further ado, let's dive into these glaze pens. I'm using the set and um, we have all of these super bright, warm, even hot colors. Um, and when I hold them over the painting, I've got a really nice palette. So um, if you're testing colors, it's always nice to kind of hold it against your painting so that you can see if that color is going to be a good match. So this one's definitely a good match. So let's use this one. I'm going to set this to the side so I don't put my sleeve in it. We're pretty much done with those inks for now. Make sure you use them for something else while they're still workable. Let's use this color this color, even this color, definitely the green, and maybe we stop it right there. So let's use this um, somewhat limited color palette that um, maybe we want this red. Um, it does a great job of matching with our artwork, which is what you're looking for. So just a little technique that you can try there. So we just wanna hit these detail areas 
So when you open up your gel pen, there's going to be a little piece of plastic on the tip and you want to just pop that right off and toss it. And um, the glaze, it's almost like a gel-like ink that comes out of the pen tip. So I'm going to put a couple of these down and then um, something that's so, so great about these pens is that you can actually blend the colors live right on the surface. So you put one color down and then you can bring another color right into it and it's almost like an organic uh, color change. Like it's coming right out, you know, it, it grew that way, you know, right out of the earth. So let's keep that technique going. See, there's a little piece of plastic. Ooh, pop it off, kind of like a dandelion. <laughs> and you can keep blending. It just gives you that super unique, you know, can't bottle it up uh, color. And I'm going to use a variety of these colors as I'm working to make sure I get lots of that pretty variation. Just so pretty. And there's almost no limit to uh, how many colors you can fuse and blend together. And I don't want to get my sleeve in there, so I'm just going to work over here. A little bit of purple. Never hurt anyone. And then let's top these off. It's a very multi-tonal um, effect, and I bet you didn't know you could do that with pens, because that's not typically how pens work. But we're working on this Yupo paper where everything just sits right on top. And because it's sitting on top, it's not sinking in and it gives you that ability to blend like a wet into wet technique would. So now, if you remember from our original drawing, I'm gonna pull this back out. We have all these little um, polka dots where the spikes of the cactus grow out. So we can even use our gel pens and you'll probably wanna use uh, maybe a darker color, maybe a variety of colors as you do this technique. So um, you wanna make sure it's dry, which you can pretty much tell just by looking at it. And we're just going to uh, place these little um, cactus pricks right back in and see how much that livens up this design just with that little bit of embellishment with a pen. So easy. Couple more. Boom. Okay. Now let's take another color and just give them um, a little embellishment to make them look a little more cactus-like. Just a little comma uh, where they grew out of and maybe some of them even have a spike. Okay, a couple more. Just loose. This is just a loose technique. Okay, one last embellishment and we're going to pour some resin on this because you're sitting there and you're thinking, uh, what's the best way to seal this artwork? I know you're thinking it and we're going to show you and it's really super fast. Um, so last thing we're going to do, I have a Micron pen and this is the O3. It's a really fine tip. Um, you can get the Micron pens in a variety of widths uh, and sizes and shapes and I'm just going to do uh, an oh so quick outline that is just going to um, provide some clarity on these edges because they do get really live and it's just going to help to uh, kind of keep this design going and make it look nice and sharp. We love a sharp design. And just a couple of additional edge lines. You don't want to push too hard. 
because you don't want to disturb that layer of glaze pen and ink. Um, so just a really light, almost like you're barely touching the surface, um, just to clean that up. And one last piece here. I don't know why, but this kind of looks like someone's waving, a little smiley face. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Maybe you see it too. Okay. Boom. All right. Pretty good. So for working quick. So um, I want to make sure that we get this last piece in for you. So what we have to do is uh, I'm going to move these alcohol inks out of the way gently. I don't want them to spill because they might stain. So I'm just going to push these items to the side. And I have here um, a pre-mounted wooden board that I'm going to be working with. It's just plain and unprimed. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to mount this. I'll turn it this way. Can you see that okay? Okay, I'm just going to mount it directly to the board, nice and gentle, so that we can get it ready for pouring. So I have here uh, a pint of gloss medium. Gloss medium, any acrylic medium that you have, is um, not only going to function as a painting medium for acrylics, but it also has an adhesive quality to it. So we're gonna set this to the side. I'm gonna take another craft brush. Any craft brushes that you have on hand that you're working with will do. I don't need any water. I'm just going to um, loosely apply this painting medium onto the board and I'm using a brush stroke going back and forth. Now once I have enough medium on the board, close this, set it to the side, you don't want to spill. I'm going to really work that adhesive in. You don't want a lot of extra material on the board when you go to stick it because uh, it's going to seep out of the edges when we put that Yupo paper on. So you really want to work it in. That's going to make it nice and sticky and workable. And the board that you're working on is going to accept it very nicely because it's unprimed. So nice raw wood board by Blick. Extremely handy for painting and crafting. So check these out on the bundle page. Everything is included. You're going to have so much fun with this technique. And I have to say, you don't see her, but our very smart, wise, and creative camera woman behind the scenes um, is the uh, developer of this technique. We have lots of project idea pages. Um, so go and check them out and you'll find this on there. Um, she is an alcohol inks creator and definitely inspires us. You'll see her artwork in our marketing. Um, so it's kind of where we get it from. So we're thankful. Uh, thank you, Tessa. <laughs> so uh, we're going to keep going <laughs> and um, wanted to um, share that tip. So now we've got it totally coated. We've got two sizes that match perfectly. Thank goodness, right? No trimming or excess. And I'm just gonna wiggle it around until it meets my edges the best they possibly can. And then you're going to want a paper towel handy nearby. Maybe you get it wet, but you're just going to lightly dab some of that excess away. Now I'm going to really hope that this is dry because the next step is where we really get this thing stuck onto the board. So remember that test paper that we had? I'm going to use the clean side and I'm going to lay this down and take a brayer or maybe you have a rolling pin or something that you can use at home or maybe you just use your hands. But this is um, a brayer that's used for block printing that you can use. Um, it's always handy to have at least one in your uh, studio closet because it can be used for a variety of applications and that just helps to smooth out the board and get any air bubbles out. 
So fortunately our ink was dry and we don't have any disasters. Thank goodness. There's one last step that we're going to show you, which is really what we need this tray for um, that's extremely important. So we're going to do a pour, a resin pour, and I want to make sure that my board doesn't stick to the surface. And I'm just going to lift it up. And actually, I think I'm going to use two paint cups because I want to make sure it's extra sturdy and we don't want a, uh, a resin pour disaster. So it keeps it nice and stable. These boards are cradled, so it's nice and sturdy. This is what you want. You want enough uh, of an edge on all sides that the resin can flow off and you can do some self-leveling. So I'm going to take the Colorberry resin. This is a one part resin to hardener combination like most pourable resins are. This is brand new. It's great stuff. We're going to use it. You're going to get a nice crystal clear coat. So take your measuring cup. Uh, and we're just going to measure out two ounces, one ounce of each uh, resin component, resin mixing component. So with your cup flat, you're going to pour that first ounce. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Ounce number one, just fill it to that one line. Let it level and make sure you don't over pour. Okay, so we've got enough of the resin. Now let's add one additional ounce for a total of two ounces of that hardener. Pour it in, keep that cup flat on the table and until you have two ounces. Make sure you follow the instructions on the back of the packaging. And we're going to mix these together. One to one. I even have the Colorberry mixing sticks and I'm going to mix these two components together. It's going to be cloudy at first and then it should clear up. You can use that stick. Make sure you get it on the edges, mixed perfectly. Keep mixing, you can see that cloudiness start to clear. Usually you want to mix your resin for about three minutes. but I'm going to mix it for about a minute so that I can show you this technique. All right, so let's go ahead and pour. And if you're following along, you can wear gloves. It can be extremely helpful, but it also helps to have this nice big uh, mixing stick that can be reusable if you keep it clean. So let's go ahead and pour. I'm just going to pour, I'm going to set this stick down. And I'm going to pour right on the center and let it flow out and get some of this released from the cup. Wow, look at that. Resin is so fun. Okay, let's do a little self-leveling. Now I only use two ounces because it really doesn't take much for... Um, resin to cover a surface and I don't want to scrape because I don't want to disturb uh, that layer underneath. I could mix it around with a craft stick if I want it to flow a little faster but I don't want to scrape so I'm going to use the flat edge because I want to make sure we get this all in. Don't scrape your artwork just move that resin over the artwork without scraping if you must. And we're just doing this for time's sake. It's always better just to do a little tilt um, and let that resin run over the side. It's going to start doing that very soon. 
The resin will self-level, so pretty much no matter how you apply it, it's going to fill itself in where there's any unevenness. So just carefully cover. Okay, and then you have one last step to wrap this all up, and it's even going to help you level. So go ahead and set your mixing sticks down once you know you've covered that whole surface. And look at how good of a job that resin has done with keeping those colors nice and bright. I'm gonna take my butane torch. This is a handheld torch uh, used for desserts. Um, so very safely fill it with butane, uh, pull the switch down and uh, push that button in as you work. So pull it down, push it in, hold it, and release the air bubbles from your work surface. Keep it at least six inches away. Don't get it too close. You wanna keep it just close enough to where you're releasing that air from the resin that you uh, got trapped in there when we were mixing it. And you're just going to get it nice and clear. Clear up that image. And this is super addicting. Now make sure that torch is turned off, set it down, and you're all set. So thank you so much for tuning in for this part two of our alcohol ink painting journey. I'm so glad you could join us. I hope you check out the products on the bundle page and we'll see you for our next